Hello everyone, Charles Watts here. Welcome back to Inside Arsenal. It's Wednesday. I hope you're all feeling well and you enjoyed that game last night. Arsenal beating Nottingham Forest 2-1 at the city ground. Surviving a late, late nervy ending. But aside from that, job well done for Arsenal. Getting the three points they needed. Backing up that win against Crystal Palace and taking another victory into that huge, huge game against Liverpool at the weekend. Arsenal, of course, going first in this round of fixtures. They had to get that win last night, send a bit of a message, put the pressure on Liverpool and Manchester City, and they've done that. And now they can sit back and hope that other teams can do them a favour over the next 48 hours or so. So plenty to talk about today. We'll go over yesterday's match in depth. You've got plenty of comments and questions from you guys reacting to what you saw last night. We'll look at what Mikel Arteta's had to say about plenty of things. Uh, so yeah, plenty to get stuck into. It was a really good win in the end for Arsenal. It was a frustrating first half, really, the way the game panned out, I have to say. And I did do my player ratings video last night after the game from the press box. If you haven't seen it, it's, it's, it's down there. You'll be able to find it. Um, and I've mentioned this in that video last night it was I thought Nottingham Forest's first half performance was really really odd for a Premier League team it was so negative so they sat so deep and offered so little going forward it really felt like one of those games you see in the FA Cup third round when a Premier League team's playing a, a non-league side or a League Two side where they're so determined not to concede a goal that they just it's all that they're focused on. And you can understand that from a lower league side. From a, from a Premier League team playing at home, I thought it was a really a really strange performance. In a way, I suppose you look at it and say, look, well, they managed to keep Arsenal out. They frustrated Arsenal. They didn't concede. They didn't really look like they were going to concede. So it, maybe that was job done for Nuno. That's what he wanted to do. And then open up a little bit in the second half. But I don't think you're going to get very far playing like that. Um, I'm not sure you're going to guarantee yourself survival in the Premier League playing like that. Um, and yeah, I think it was really weird. I mean, Arsenal, they, they, it was pretty slow. They moved the ball slow, but it was so hard. Honestly, watching it, looking up and just seeing what Forrest are doing. I've seen low blocks before this season. I've seen plenty of low blocks before this season. I'm not sure I've seen much like that from what Nottingham Forest did yesterday. It was so deep. There's so little space. And I know it can be frustrating when you say, oh, move the ball quicker. We're taking an extra touch. Shoot. And Arsenal were guilty of that at times in the first half. No doubt about it. But it was very, very difficult. There was very little space. And um, you know, in the end, they they had to stay patient. They did that. And then when the space did arrive in the second half and Forrest did open up a little bit with that substitution, bringing a one year on and just showing a little bit more um, attacking ambition that allowed Arsenal to find the space. And then they scored the goals through Jesus and, and Bakaya Saka to, to win the game. I mean, you look at the stats, it was it was very, very one sided. 19 shots for Arsenal, nine to Forrest, three on target for each. Um, that's certainly something you can you can say about Arsenal's performance that they didn't test Matt Turner enough at times yesterday with all the territory they had and all the possessions they had um you know Turner wasn't called into action enough um and yeah that's something you could probably say about Arsenal but on the whole it was a, it was a real solid fight this the, these stats are from canonstats.com you can find the link down below in the description for the uh for his site and a real detailed stats that he does after every game really really good well worth looking at you look at that field tilt image if you're watching this on youtube is pretty remarkable obviously forest the only time they had this sort of dominant field tilt was in those last few minutes in injury time after they'd scored the goal and made it 2-1 and they just started trying to th throw the kitchen sink at arsenal with long balls into the penalty area but other than that that sh that image just shows how how dominant arsenal were in terms of possession and territory and um yeah, it was a strange game, really strange game to watch and one they had to stay very, very patient in. And, and they did, and they got the win that they absolutely thoroughly deserved. It wasn't brilliant by any means, but I think it's very hard to produce a real exhilarating, thrilling performance against a team playing like the way Nottingham Forest played last night. Is what Mikel Arteta had to say after the game. He said, I'm really happy with the performance and with the result. It was still in our tummy what happened here last year and we wanted to put it right. We want to generate some momentum now in the league. I think we've got that and the performance was very good. I thought we completely dominated the game. We had to be patient. We didn't allow them to run and we were able to generate chances in various ways, which is really pleasing to see from the team. I think we showed a lot of maturity to deal with the game 
in the way that we had to do. But in the last three or four minutes, we conceded a goal and then you have to suffer in this league. And Arsenal certainly had to suffer in those last few minutes. I certainly suffered watching it in the press box. I bet everyone in the away fans, everyone in the away end and everyone watching around the world certainly suffered in those last few minutes. It would have been an absolute travesty if Arsenal hadn't won that game. But when you don't put it out of sight, and again, that's a criticism you can consistently label at Arsenal this season. When you don't put games out of sight, you're always opening yourselves up to one little moment that goes against you and suddenly the game's back on again. And that's what happened with Nottingham Forest. It was very similar, really, to uh, the game at the Emirates on the opening day of the season, although Forest scored their goal a little bit earlier in the, on that occasion than they did last night. But um, yeah, on the whole, I'm, I'm, Mikel was happy about it and I'm not surprised he was happy about it. He didn't look that happy at times watching the game <laughs> down below. I spent a lot of time watching the Arsenal dugout and he didn't appear that happy um, throughout the game, but he was certainly certainly happy after it. And, um, you know, Gabriel Jesus, I thought, deserves an awful lot of credit for his performance yesterday. I thought he was very, very good, especially in the second half. He really came alive, as Arsenal did when they started to generate more chances, when they started to have more space. And you could see when, when Forrest did open up a little bit and, you know, haven't criticised him for the way they played in the first half, I suppose you could point to what happened in the second half when they did open up a little bit and the space and did give, did give Arsenal more space then I suppose you can say, well, that's why they played like they did in the first half, because when you get given more space like you did in the second, you get picked off. And I understand that argument in a way, but I still think you have to show a little bit of attacking ambition in this in this league, especially if you want to stay in the Premier League. And Forrest are far from assured of staying in the Premier League this season. Um, but I thought Jesus played well. You know, he, he really did. And the way he responded to that chance, which he missed in the second half when he hit the post, which was an absolutely brilliant move. It was such a shame he didn't score that because it would have been, you know, Brilliant goal. One of those goals you'd watch over and over again. The little flick from Saka, the reverse pass from Odegaard. Um, but Jesus hit the post and he could have easily let his head drop, especially at the moment where he knows that everyone's focusing on him and the amount of goals he's scoring. He could easily let his head drop, but he didn't. He carried on. He was just constantly on the move, constantly trying to find space. He was really alert for the first goal, for his goal. Um, good play by Zinchenko. Quick thinking free uh, throw on and yes, Jesus got a little bit of a luck when he squeezed the shot through Matt Turner's legs, but he made his own luck in that way. And then it was a really good play for him to set up Saka's goal. Um, and in it one was a really, really good counter-attack and a lovely pass from Jesus. And I thought he deserved a lot of credit for Jesus. Arsenal wouldn't have won that game without him yesterday. And Mikel was really happy afterwards with the striker. He said, look, Gabby started to win the game two days ago. He had an issue with his knee and everyone was trying to protect him and saying that he, uh, that he shouldn't go outside. But he was saying on match day minus two, match day minus one, I want to be there. I want to help the team to win the game. When you have that mentality, good things are going to happen. I'm really pleased with him. Um, he was asked, you know, about that knee injury that you talked about there. He said, I don't, he asked if it was a concern. He said, I don't know. He got a big hit in the last game. His knee reacted and it's a knee that he had surgery on before, but he was super positive and he's feeling good. He was so sharp in training. I'm not surprised he played the way he played tonight. And I thought he did play very well. Um, and especially that response. I think it takes big players to respond to big moments. And he could have easily let his head drop when he hit the post, but he didn't. And in the end, he was the match winner. He was a difference maker in the game for Arsenal. And that's what you want from Jesus. Um, because he's got to prove the difference when he's playing up front. He's got to be the difference. And I thought he was last night in the, with his contributions in the final third. I did smile when the team sheet came out. Actually, before the team sheet came out, because we started to get wind of it about 20 minutes before the team sheet um came out that Emil Smith Rowe was starting and as, as I'm sure you can all imagine I was very very happy in the press room hearing that news only a second league start for Smith Rowe since May 2022 I think the defeat at Newcastle that ended Arsenal's chances of the top four that season uh, he's obviously started one game in the league this season the 5-0 win against Sheffield United earlier in the season I have to admit I was not expecting him to start last night I was kind of hoping and I mentioned it in yesterday's show I was hoping he might get the nod in that left eight role but I wasn't expecting it so it was a really nice surprise to see him start and I thought he played well you know for his first game for a long long time in the Premier League first start for a long long time in the Premier League I thought he played well I thought in the first half he was probably Arsenal's brightest play he was moving all across the pitch had one really good moment when he got in behind and sent that cross in that was deflected just over but it was just his movement you know he looked he didn't look like a sort of stranger in the team, which sometimes you can when you come in from the cold like he did. He was very much on the same wavelength of all the other players. He wanted the ball. He looked hungry. And um, yeah, I thought he was very, very good. And Mikel was really happy with him afterwards. He said, I'm really pleased with Emil. It's been a long time since he had an opportunity to start the game, but he's been training really, really well. He's really sharp. 
He was asked why he was really impressed with Smith Rowe. He said, because he went for it. He was free. He was flowing. He was moving. He was participating. His body language was good. He's just a beautiful footballer to watch. I'm really pleased because he was really connected with the team. And I thought he played in a really good way. It's a big moment for Smith Rowe. You know, he's been waiting a long time for that opportunity. When Mikel says there that he's been really sharp, you know, that's exactly what I've heard in training the last couple of weeks and the trip to Dubai. You know, I've been told he's been bang on it and he's been really, really pushing. He's really determined. As I said a couple of weeks ago, when those links to West Ham came out, he's determined to force his way back into the starting picture. You know, he doesn't have to start every game. Of course he doesn't. No one should be starting every game unless you deserve it. Um, but he just needs minutes. He needs to be given some starts to be involved, to show what he can do. And, you know, it's really good sign, I think, that Mikel's put him in. I'm really happy with it. And I just think he's got so much to offer in this team, um, Emil Smith-Rowe. And he's been really, really underused so far when he's been fit. And um, hopefully this is the start of him playing lots of minutes. It'll be interesting to see who starts at the weekend in that huge game against Liverpool. There was a bit of an incident at full time, which I'm sure you're aware of if you're watching on YouTube. You can see a sort of image grab from the um, TNT feed of Zinchenko and Ben White after the game, having a little bit of a, I don't know, spat, if you want to call it that, heated discussion. Looked like um, uh, looked like Ben White was saying something to Zinchenko, probably about the way the, the Forest goal was conceded. Zinchenko wasn't happy um, with him and was shouting back. And Mikel Arteta had to come and sort of drag Smith... Um, Zinchenko away and he gave him a bit of a pep talk to calm it all down. He was asked about it in his press conference afterwards. He said, look, I love it. They demand more from each other and they are not happy with the way they concede that and they are trying to resolve it. It was a bit heated, but that means it's not enough playing the way we played. The result has to be bigger. That's pushing each other and being and not being happy conceding. I have to encourage that and promote it in the right way and in a respectful way. Sometimes after the game, it's emotional and heated, but I love that the players are pushing each other and demanding excellence. Look, this sort of thing happens all the time. It's not a big, not a big deal at all. I, I, I have to admit, and I've got some of your questions and comments coming up soon. And I obviously did my player ratings yesterday after the game, and I'm. I feel like Zinchenko is a little bit of a whipping boy at the moment for a lot of fans because I just don't. I watch that goal over and over again, and I really don't see that that goal is his fault. Yes, he got beaten in the air by a forward, but. The ball was over the, just over the top of his head. It's that I don't look at that as a massive Zinchenko error for the goal. I look at it far more as the fact that Saliba got totally outmuscled by a one for the goal. And I just feel uh, it, it feels like most goals that are conceded, everyone's determined to find a way of blaming Zinchenko for it. And Ben White obviously did. And he knows far more about football than I do, obviously. Uh, they're playing at the elite level. But I still feel like Zinchenko's... A, finding himself being a little bit of a whipping boy at the moment. And I, I thought he played well yesterday, Zinchenko. When he was on the ball, he was always trying to make things happen for Arsenal. Yes, he was frustrating at times. He's taken a couple of touches too many, but you can say that about pretty much every player on the team in that first half. But he was always involved. He was I thought he was one of Arsenal's better players. I gave him a seven in my player ratings, and so many of you were complaining about that, which I was a, a little bit surprised at. But, um, you know, this, this isn't it's just something that you see all the time in football. It happens, and as Mikel says, he's certainly not going to lose any sleep over it, I imagine. And they would have certainly kissed and made up once they got back to the dressing room after the game. Um, turning to your sort of questions and, well, not questions, your views on what you saw last night. Lots of you getting in touch. I gave Ben White a six in my player ratings. That didn't go down very well in the comments, judging by a lot of your replies. There's some of you from his Alder Slayer, from Sam, from Guna Jake uh, talking about it. Um, Alderslayer saying, I actually thought Ben White looked back to his best yesterday, made a few really good overlapping runs, provided Saka with a lot of support, which certainly seemed to help his game. Sam says, hard on Ben. He played an eight today, the best thing on the right-hand side. He gave them options and dummy runs. Watch him again. Guna Jake asking White, six only. Look, six, six isn't a bad score, I don't think. I think six is a, it's just a, a, a decent average score. Six is my average when I do player ratings. Anything below, below six it's just below average. Six is average. Anything above six is just just above, obviously. Um, so I didn't think he played badly. It's it's tough. Look, it, when you're doing play ratings, everyone's got their own opinions on things, especially in the second half when I'm I've got my head down, writing and doing what I need to do during the games. Like I, I almost missed the Forest goal, for example, because I was I was too busy writing trying to get my stuff over to goal for the full time whistle for the ratings and things that I do on that, and I suddenly look up just as a one years scoring and then I, to find out exactly what happened I have to wait for the replay because that's just what happens in the press box when you're writing and trying to watch a game at the same time sometimes you do miss things um 
And I wasn't saying Ben White played badly at all yesterday. I thought he, I thought he was fine. He did link up very well down the right hand side at times with Saka. You know, he was heavily involved in that excellent move that led to Jesus hitting the post with his pass inside. Um, and so six, but don't I wouldn't be looking at six and thinking that's a harsh rating. I just think that's a that was, it was a decent, you know, it was a, a perfectly normal Ben White performance. I thought, but nothing overly special. But yeah. Obviously, lots of you uh, disagree, and that is absolutely fine. Some more of your qu- uh, comments on the game. Uh, LTMAFC says, another game without a clean sheet is rather concerning. Makes me so excited to see that party rice pivot. Loved seeing ESR back. Think he should be used left wing also. And Trossard and Jesus back up and sell Eddie whilst he's good value. Carlo Gunas says, glad to see Smith Rowe start today. I thought he'd been well. I don't think he'll start against Liverpool. But after that, I'd like to see him given a run of games, starting to see him get back to his best. Aiba 07 says, hi, Charles. I really liked our first half performance, except we didn't penetrate. And that was that would be a problem moving forward. Apart from playing the Forest player on sides, Zinchenko was solid and so was White. Smith Rowe is really good considering he hasn't played much. Most of his runs were missed by Rice and Zinchenko. Good performance overall, but improvements can be made bring on Liverpool I think that's a really interesting point that um Carlo says there when talking about Smith Rowe he says I don't think he'll start against Liverpool um and I was thinking that last night as I was coming back from the game that that decision Mikel's going to make in who plays left eight against Liverpool is going to be really interesting you know I thought Smith Rowe did well last night does he keep his place does he deserve to lose his place I don't think he does deserve to lose his place but You know, you've got big decisions to make in terms of how you set the teams up tactically against a team like Liverpool. I think he probably will go with Jorginho and Declan Rice for this game. Um, I can't imagine there's any way Thomas Partey is going to start now, given he didn't play yesterday. And we still don't know exactly what's going on with Thomas Partey, uh, whether there's been any sort of setback or not. Um, But Jorginho obviously played in the FA Cup game against Liverpool with Declan Rice. I thought they played well together. And I just think that's probably what Mikel Arteta will do. Maybe that'll be a bit harsh on Smith Rowe, but I still look at what he did last night as a real, real positive. And as Carlo says there, I think he'll earn he's earned himself plenty more starts, even if it's not this weekend in that game against Liverpool. Well, Cormac AFC here says Trossard's appearance was really bright. He was running at players and taking them on as well. Safe on the ball. I think Martinelli was being too safe and not taking enough risks. Um I agree with your point about Zinchenko. Thought he was taking too many touches and slowing things down with a team. A player in low block. We need to move the ball quickly side to side to find the openings, but we seem to slow it down. It makes it harder to break down. Matt says, hey, Charles, full-time analysis. Slow first half. Played in a new style the manager wants to play. Second half, we showed more impetus. However, were it not for a turnout error, I think the nerves would have intensified and draw could have been on the cards. Overall, a big three points, especially with Villa losing, but nothing to shout about. My confidence in the team is still low, and I think the title is beyond us. Um, fair points, Matt. Obviously, I, um, open to your own opinion I mean we're only two points off the top of the table now you know Liverpool haven't got the easiest game although Chelsea you never know what, what sort of Chelsea side's going to turn up but Arsenal could have, could effectively be two points off the top of the table uh come the end of the next couple of days so we shall see um but yeah look first half it was I don't really think it was played in a new style of the manager that first half because as I said I was watching I sat right behind the dugout and Arteta was not happy with what he was seeing from his team and in terms of how quickly they were moving the ball. And there was plenty of times when he could see passes that should have been made and yet the player sort of turned around and went the other way and played a safe, easy pass to the sideways. And you saw Arteta turn around and like throw his water bottle on the floor, complain to the um, to his assistants. So it's not that's not the way he wants his team to play. He wants the, the team to move the ball quickly. He wants them to take chances and try and you know, open teams up by breaking a line of a pass and playing a difficult pass rather than an easy one. So I'm not sure, I don't really agree with the fact that that's the new style from the manager. I just think at the moment when the team's playing that sort of low block, that's just what they seem to be doing, whether it's a confidence thing or what. Um, But I also think it was just very, very hard. It really was. Watching that game, it was so noticeable what Forrest were doing and how difficult it was to find any space. Um, and as soon as that space did appear in the second half, you know, Arsenal looked much, much better and they played the ball a lot, lot quicker and they caused Forest problems. So I think game state plays a big, big part in how these teams played. And we've seen in the last two games, the way Arsenal counter-attack on teams when they do have space, how dangerous they can be. We saw it against Crystal Palace with the goals they scored. We saw it again last night with the second goal that Arsenal scored. So when they get the opportunity, when the, there is wide open spaces there, they can absolutely rip teams apart with their counter-attack in football and their quick, playing, flowing football. 
Um, so I don't think necessarily that what we saw in the first half is just the way that Mikel wants them to see. And McCormack AFC, I wanted to point out Trossard's performance. I thought he was fantastic yesterday when he came off the bench. Leandro Trossard, it was a really, really good cameo. He was very close to making it 3-0 with that screamer, which flew just over. And the bit of play in injury time right at the end when he ran the ball, he got it in his own half, ran it a good sort of 60, 70 yards, cut back, beat a couple of players and just kept the ball and just absorbed the pressure, soaked up the time. I thought it was excellent from Leandro Trossard. And it was a really, really bright cameo from him coming on in that second half. So fair play to him. All right, that's it for today's show. Thank you very much for watching or for listening. As always, I do hope you have a very good Wednesday, wherever you're watching or listening around the world. I'll be back tomorrow as we start to gear up to that. What would you call it? Huge, I don't know, how do you describe Arsenal versus Liverpool on Sunday? It is just absolutely massive. We shall see how that go goes on. So, yeah, we're back tomorrow to start to really look ahead to that game. It is transfer deadline day, of course, tomorrow. Not that I'm expecting anything dramatic to happen for Arsenal on this occasion, but you never know. And I'll be back to talk about all of that and more tomorrow. Until then, have a very good day, everyone. Speak to you soon. Bye-bye.